Okay, so now let's talk about some intuition behind the intuition behind uh, learning parameters for a feed forward neural network, right? And how do we connect it to what we already know, right? We have already seen how to learn parameters of a very simple network. I mean, it's not even a network, but for a single neuron, which had a W and a B and a single input, and there was a Y hat, we had seen how to learn the parameters of this network using gradient descent. Now, this thing that we know and understand well, can we somehow stretch it and extend it to help us learn the uh, parameters of all the parameters of a feed forward neural network. Right? So, that is what we will try to focus on. Okay? Uh, so, the story so far is that we have introduced feed forward neural networks and now we are interested in finding an algorithm for learning the parameter. Right? So, this is what our feed forward neural network looks like. Now, let us just quickly recall our gradient descent algorithm right, and make some commentary on that. Right? So, this is what our gradient descent algorithm was. We had initialized the weights and then at every step we were updating the weights, right? And now I can think of writing this a bit more compactly, right? In fact, we had looked at it already. I know that this I could write it as a vector theta t plus 1. Similarly, this I could write it as theta t and this I could write it as a vector gradient, right? The gradient and this also I could write it as a vector theta naught, right? So, I am going, now going to uh, change this equation and write it more compactly where I am going to replace the collection of W and B by theta, right? That is the only change I am going to uh, do and uh, that is fair enough. This is how I am going to write it more uh, compactly. So, theta naught is a collection of W naught B naught and once you understand that, this falls in place, right? So, theta t plus 1 is just now W t plus 1 comma b t plus 1 and you are just doing vector uh, operations now instead of like individual uh, uh, element wise operations right and that is perfectly fine as we saw in the previous uh, slide where I had annotated the vectors right. So, there is nothing wrong here and where the gradient right. So, when I say grad delta theta right I am going to use this notation right. Uh, the more appropriate elaborate notation would be gradient of the loss function with theta evaluated at time t, right? But I am just going to use this shortcut notation and hence I am elaborating what I mean by that. It means just the collection of the partial derivatives, right? So, I have taken the partial derivative with res of the loss function with respect to w t, the uh, pa partial derivative of the loss function with respect to b. It is not b t or w t, it is w and b and then evaluated at the current values, right? Which is at time step t, right? We have seen this uh, what that means in the previous uh, lecture. So, this is what my uh, this notation here means, right? I am just clarifying that it is just a collection of the partial derivatives that means it is the gradient, right? Now, this was all uh, good, right? Now, in this feed forward neural network, instead of theta equal to w b, right, which was just a collection of two vectors, now my theta is a collection of many more elements, right? It is all the elements of w1, which is n square elements, all the elements of w2, w3, which are again n square elements, and then elements of wl, which is n into k, then all the biases, there were n biases in layer 1, n biases in layer 2, and then k in layer 3, right? All of this collected together. So, I have a large army of parameters now, instead of just two parameters, right? But if I am going to write theta as a collection of all the parameters, I can still do that. I am just going to say that theta is a collection of all the parameters. Earlier my vectors were of size 2, now my vectors are very large, right? They are n square plus n square plus n into k plus n plus n plus k, right? In this specific example. So, it is a very large vector. So, what? It is still just a vector and all these operations still can hold, right? Just as I can add two dimensional vectors or subtract one vector from another, I can do the same for these very large dimensional vectors also, right? So, you can still use the same algorithm for learning the parameters of a model, except that now earlier, remember there were only these two quantities and we still had to derive this, right? We still had derived painfully what is the equation or what is the expression for the derivative of the loss function with respect to w, what is the expression for the derivative of the loss function with respect to b and then substituted values in that, right? So, we still have to do that computation, right? So, it is just that our gradient of del theta now looks like a very, very big vector and we should know how to compute every quantity in this vector, right? And we did this for those two simple values w and b and that itself was quite a bit of very, uh, derivation. So, our quest would be somehow come up with a formula 
which allows us to compute all of this at one go, right, without painfully deriving it. In fact, we'll derive it, but we derive it in such a way that we could compute an entire uh, matrix of der partial derivatives at one go instead of computing each of those n square values one by one, right. So that's what one of the quests of this lecture is going to be, but that's all for later. For now, I want you to focus on this graduation from theta naught being a collection of two elements to theta naught being a collection of many elements, but as long as I can tell you what these are, the same algorithm still applies, right, that because you just want to compute the derivative of the loss function with respect to each parameter and update the parameter accordingly, right. So, in six, now our delta theta looks much more complex, so we have delta theta, uh, the loss derivative of the loss, partial derivative of the loss function with respect to w1, 1, 1, that is the first weight in w1 matrix all the way up to the n square weights that you have in the w1 matrix, similarly the n square weights that you have in the w2 matrix, similarly the n into k weights that you had in the last layer, similarly the n biases that you had in each layer and the k biases that you had in the last layer, right. So, this is not like a, a something cross n matrix, right, because this last rho has only k, right. So, it will not be like, I have just put everything together in one collection. I am not saying that this is a matrix, right. This is just a collection of partial derivatives because each layer might have different, right. So, I have just assume everything is n square here, but we saw that other example where it could be n cross m here, then m cross p here, then some n here, m here and then k here, right, for the biases, right. So, it is all going to be different across different layers. So, this is not like a well-formed matrix, it is just a collection I have put together just for illustrative purposes, right. So, these are all the partial derivatives that I need to collect and I should be able to do this fairly uh, conveniently and not like painfully go over every element and have to write down the formula for that and compute that, right. I should be able to at least take one entire matrix of weights and compute the partial derivatives of all the elements at one go, right. So, that is what my quest is going to be. But if I can do that, then I am done, right. So, this is where we are, this is what the intuition is. You can use the gradient descent algorithm as it is, provided you have these uh, quantities. So, we need to answer two questions. How to choose the loss function? Why do we need to answer this question? Because we need to compute the partial derivatives of the uh, loss function with respect to the weights, right. So, unless I know what the loss function is, I can't even start writing down what that formula is going to be. So, I need to know how to choose the loss function. And once we choose the loss function, I need to compute every element of the gradient vector, right, which is the partial derivatives with respect to all the weights that I had in the network, right. So, if I know these two, then I will just come back to my gradient descent algorithm and I can uh, find the, I can learn the parameters, right. So, that is the intuition. This idea should be clear that while we have graduated from that two parameter case to like a very large number of parameters case, the basic idea still remains the same. I just need to be able to compute the partial derivatives of the loss function with respect to the weights. If I can do that, I can run gradient descent and to compute that, I need to know the loss function and I need to know how to compute the partial derivatives. So, that is what we are going to do uh, in today's lecture, right. So, this is going to be a very long lecture, but this is what we are going to do, okay.